This film is an unauthorized exploration in the life of Sammy Benson, known by his stage name Black Youngster. The perspectives presented in this film are independently gathered and do not present official views or endorsements of Black Youngster, CMG, or Heavy Camp, nor his estate or any associated parties. All of the information in this video is from research and entertainment purposes only. How you doing ladies and gentlemen? I go by the name of Black Youngster. I was born premature. Doctor told my mama, yeah, your son's gonna need him, man. My princess. My, my, my princess. Ooh, you, you, so, you, you so beautiful. When I got shot, I feel like everybody needs to be shot. So, yeah. <laughs> you know what went on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They know what went on. I was serving my, my, my aunties, my mamas. I was serving whoever. I don't give a fuck, you a baby. You want some crack? You know, that's what we were doing, bro. We had to survive, bro. Me and not check. Me and not, you know what I'm saying? He's a I f with black youngs. I f with black youngs. You look in there, bitch. You get out. You get out what you put in there. It's, it's certain folks that got something to do with this. It's Juke. And God, it really ain't got nothing to do with this shit. But, but Juke, he's his, his brother. It's Juke. It's Juke. It's Migo. It's Youngster. He that the person is Anthony Mims, also known as Big Jook. Now, Big Jook is the brother of rapper Yo Gotti. Uh, I went in the bank, you know, I um, I got, I, I, I went, I went and I got 200,000 on my, on my account, and I was in the bank, and they, uh, I come out the bank, I see the police, I walk to the car, I see one of them put in my bag like him. So I, they, they come bum rush me at the car and put me on the ground, put, put guns in my head, you know, like. So I did some digging, and found some holes in his story. According to Wells Fargo, quote, Mr. Benson is not an account holder with us. He did not enter our store, nor did he make any withdrawals. 300. Why? Why? I'm very kind. Oh, yeah, taking the money's out. Yeah, 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 you send your little to do all your talking. Talk for yourself, change. I was trying to pull up and smack the shit on. In real life, I'm just keeping the honey. I was pulling up for real. I cannot have, I can't, I can't, I cannot have conversation with you no more. Cause I changed me. Yeah. Born Samuel Marquez Benson in the South Side area of Memphis, raised on McMillan and South Parkway. Black Youngster says in numerous of interviews that he had it hard and he had to provide for his family at a very young age. Being that it was him and three younger brothers living in a one bedroom apartment with his grandmother. Before jumping off the porch to hit the streets, the Memphis villain started off working at a grocery store. The store was called Make Money Groceries very close to his grandmother's residence. At the age of 10, he was making it happen for his family. Following the code of the Memphis maneuvers, Youngster would have his cousin call up to the store and order food, in which no one would show up to get the food, and in return, the owners would offer to give the food to Youngster and his family at the end of the day so he could feed his three brothers. The clever finesse would be short-lived after the store was temporarily closed down. Youngster turned to the South Memphis streets to make ends meet. At the young age of 12 years old, Youngster admitted that he started to deal drugs. Not only to random people in the neighborhood, Youngster said that he would even sell to family members. I was serving my, my, my aunties, my mamas. I was serving whoever. I don't give a fuck, you a baby. You want some crack? You know, that's what we were doing, bro. We had to survive, bro. Being optimistic about it, in that newly found hustle, he admitted that he would sell high quality drugs instead of stepped on work, which would be dangerous to a random smoker. At one point, Youngster had pride in his drugs until he figured out it was easier to sell fake drugs to local hustlers. During a Vlad interview, he admitted that he made $90,000 off of selling what's called fast bricks. He would sell fake drugs and run off with the money. I ain't gonna lie, when I was in the crate, I had started off selling good crack. 
I was trying to do my thing, trying to give them the good, the good dope. But when I just got deep into it, I stopped serving my folks. And I just started serving niggas like to go. I served, I'm, I'm the supplier. Like, you come to me and get re, re up, and then you go serve everybody. You know what I'm saying? So I, I was sitting bullshit, like, dope, but we call it, I call it fast bricks. It's called a good old trick bag, a dangerous move, but profitable. That one bright idea would only work a few times. They say Memphis is small, but the streets and the illegal life of Memphis made the streets even smaller. After selling fake drugs to the wrong person, this person was not going for it and started to look for a black youngster for revenge. While on the block, black was shot three times during a drive-by. According to youngster, he was hit in the legs twice and once in the arm. He says at the time of the shot, he didn't even have his weapon on him. To this day, he says he has no clue who shot being that he was moving so recklessly in the streets at the time. Being a true villain, instead of black youngster chilling and laying low, and he wanted the ops to feel the same way he felt when he got hit up. So they say when you go looking for trouble, it may show up at your front door. And that's exactly what happened weeks after. Now black youngster's pride and joy, his youngest brother, Ronnie Benson, died November of 2013. He died in those same Memphis streets that youngster once ran. Youngster admitted during an interview that the passing of his brother didn't make any sense to him because his brother wasn't in the streets and out of all of the four of them, he was the best one. Youngster said that his brother was an honest citizen and Youngster was proud of his brother. Occasionally, it wasn't out of the ordinary for Youngster to post tributes to his youngest brother. Lord knows I miss my baby brother so much, I can't believe he's gone. I've kept him out the streets and made sure he didn't grow up like me and the I was doing and the young nigga listened to me and did everything I told him to do. As soon as he was about to go to military and do something with his life, a nigga took his life away. I just don't understand. How can someone kill a good person for this world so dirty do whatever for some money? I swear to God. Rest in peace, Ronnie B. I do for you. I love you, little brother. I need everyone to help me wish my baby brother happy birthday. I miss you so much, young Every day I wish it was me and you gone than you. I swear to God I love you more than I love myself. Hashtag RIP. Hashtag Ronnie. Hashtag B. Lastly, he said, I miss you so much, little brother. I swear to God when you died, I thought about myself. No lie. Sometimes I just wish God would have took me and not you. Little brother, I wish we could trade places. My life will never be the same without you. This shit just don't feel right. I remember that time you looked out for me when I stole grandma friend's Miss K's money so I could buy something to eat because our big cousin Terry stole all our food and took it down the street to his girlfriend's house. I did everything I told you I was going to do. I just wish you was here to see me, little brother. You will be so proud of me. I changed my life around, little brother. I don't rob or sell dope no more. I'm an important person. I don't work for no food no more, little brother. I work for myself. Now I got our two baby brothers out the street and grandma and mommy not struggling no more because I'm rich now, baby brother. You will never be forgotten as long as I'm living. I swear to God, I love you with all my heart. Happy birthday, baby bro. Hashtag happy birthday. Hashtag rest in peace, Ronnie B. Now the loss of his first brother put him in a very bad place. He felt lost and cold and even shortly gave up on his aspirations to be a rapper. He was hopeless. Black youngster admitted that the loss of his brothers is when he turned to the streets even more from robbing to jacking to selling drugs. And occasionally he would record music. One recording session, he recorded a song called Heavy. The song was a huge breakout in the Memphis streets. So good that it caught the attention of Yo Gotti. Yo Gotti jumped on a remix and put Youngster on tour with them. Not only was he a new label mate at CMG, he was gifted a brand new red Lamborghini by Gotti. While they were doing a performance in the club, Gotti actually told the brand new Lamborghini in the parking lot. When they left the club, he had a new car. Bag out.
Now months after releasing the heavy song, Black Youngster was on a private jet and he officially signed to CMG, the creative music group now, but back in the day it stood for a music group. It wasn't said how much he was signed to the label for, but almost instantly Youngster started to show loads of cash and videos on social media, usually throwing money in bunches and showing his personality to the millions of people weekly on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Get out. Get out what you put in this After releasing his debut mixtape with CMG, I Swear to God, released September 24th of 2015. While preparing for his next mixtape in 2016, the youngster was making a lot of show money from performances at local clubs, mostly the Chitlin Circuit. While on a stop in Atlanta, he had his first viral moment that everybody heard about. This time, it was for having too much cash on him. Now, according to the reports, the police were waiting for him outside of Atlanta Wells Fargo Bank for taking out $200,000. Now, rumors say the bank teller tipped off the police. Uh, I went in the bank, you know, I um, I got, I, I, I went, I went, I got $200,000 on my, on my account, and I was in the bank, and they, uh, I come out the bank, I see the police, I walk to the car, I see one of them putting my bag like him. So I, they, they come bum rush me at the car and put me on the ground, put, put in my head, you know, like, so I'm like, what I do? And then later, we're like, I don't supposed to have 2000 on me, 200000 on me. So I'm like, I'm a millionaire. Like, how can I not have 200000 on me? I, they, they said somebody wrote a bogus check, and they thought I did a, I did a bogus check too, but I'm legit. So they, they confused me with whoever they was looking for. They confused me with them and thought I was doing something bogus until they realized when they check my account saying I was out was worth 1, 1.3 million. And they, and, they, and they realized, you know, he'll he'll multi millionaire, so we gotta let him go. And they apologized to me, but they just took a hundred thousand of my money. I'm gonna go to the police precinct right now, and go get my other hundred thousand. So I'm going, I'm gonna get my money from them, and I'm gonna get out the city. I gotta roll. Welcome back. This is a story that is blowing up on social media. A rapper claims he was detained and profiled after taking a stack of cash out of his bank account. Atlanta police say they were only responding to a call from the bank. And now another twist from the bank. We sent Brittany Miller to clear up the confusion. We had way Fargo, I wouldn't I wouldn't I got too much money out. They said they, they thought I would rob the bank. This video was taken right after hip hop artist Black Youngsta, also known as Sam Benson, says he was handcuffed by police. According to published reports, he says after withdrawing two hundred thousand dollars cash from his account at this Wells Fargo bank in Buckhead. He was confused for someone who wrote a bad check. Well, Atlanta police say the description given to officers by the bank was, quote, limited and conflicting. As a result, officers say Benson was briefly detained while they sorted everything out. So I asked police if the rap artist was profiled. A spokesperson with the department said no. However, Benson maintained he was legit on various social media posts. So I did some digging and found some holes in his story. According to Wells Fargo, quote, Mr. Benson is not an account holder with us. He did not enter our store, nor did he make any withdrawals. A source close to law enforcement says this stack of cash you see here isn't even his and doesn't add up to $200,000. They say it's his managers who only withdrew about $70,000 from his bank account. Months after the fame, he released his Young and Reckless mixtape. Now, the first song on the album was Shake Some, which was a diss track to Memphis artist Young Dolph. But this diss track didn't come out of the blue. It was a built up tension and beef in the Memphis area that started with Yo Gotti and Yo Gotti's brother, Big Jook, who was also the mentor to Black Youngster. Now, first, Young Dolph was known in Memphis as being a trap boy, supplying work throughout the Memphis area. At one point, according to Dolph, he used to supply Big Jook, Gotti's brother, he would give him drugs to sell in the Memphis area. This alone was a big deal, being that Young Dolph was very younger than Jook and he was already the supplier in the position in the drug world. I just know it, big brother. You know what I'm saying? I helped. You know what I mean? It was right. a bun. You know what I mean? I helped out. So you know, know Gotti and his family, yeah. Man. The relationship turned sour between Big Jook and Dolph after Young Dolph got into the music industry. Following his mixtape release, High Class Street Music, The American Gangsta, Dolph would make a viral moment on Sway in the Morning's TV show. It would be a big moment for Dolph and get him a lot of eyeballs on him, but it would change everyone's life forever. 
In the interview, Dolph revealed that people were trying to sign him to a recording contract and why he turned down certain deals. Now, several record labels were reaching out to Young Dolph. Artists were as well. Gucci Man, 2 Chains, and a handful of other artists were reaching out. This is when Yo Gotti's name came up. Dolph revealed that he'd rather ride his own wave instead of latching on to another artist's movement. It didn't help that Yo Gotti's brother and Young Dolph wasn't seeing eye to eye at the time. Only thing was going to happen behind it was people like, oh, he popped off because of Gotti. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Which I can't do that because I got too much of my own time and money invested mm -hmm. in it. Months later, Dolph went on his Twitter to diss Yo Gotti. Bro went from being my number one fan and wanted to sign me to being my biggest hater. Hashtag facts. It's crazy because Young Dolph was even brought out as a guest during a Yo Gotti performance, showing that Gotti was giving him a co-sign and wanted to work with him officially on paper and sign him to his record label. Dolph declined. Not saying Yo Gotti's name directly with that tweet, but the industry knew exactly who Dolph was speaking about. That same month on February 18th, Young Dolph announced that he was releasing his debut album, King of Memphis. A chess move on Dolph's side, being that Yo Gotti crowned himself the King of Memphis years before Young Dolph got into the music industry. Although Gotti didn't make a public reaction on the album title, we know it was talked about, especially in Memphis. The next month is when Black Youngster jumped off the porch to beef with Young Dolph. Some say it was because of his loyalty to CMG and Yo Gotti, who actually changed his life, while others seeing the beef as Youngster's opportunity to gain some fame and sell some records. So instead of subliminally dissing like Yo Gotti did, Black Youngster directly said he was going to slap Young Dolph. He said, when I see that Young Dolph, I'ma slap the shit out of him, on my life. Hashtag paper route. Hashtag CMG run the city. Hashtag get with the program. Hashtag king of South Memphis. Hey man, I'm a QG, bro. Dolph, you a bitch. You a soft ass You nice ass If you got a problem, nigga, say you got a problem. Shake ass bitch ass nigga. You ain't no more king of Memphis. You ain't king of South Memphis. You ain't from the city. Dolph replied with the laughing emoji and a thumbs down emoji. Now doubling down on his threat, Black Youngster pulled up to Young Dolph's Castalia neighborhood with all type of weapons looking for Dolph. What makes the beef even worse is that Black Youngster and Young Dolph are from the same exact section of Memphis, which is literally five to 10 minutes away from each other. If you're watching this video on YouTube, it's heavily redacted because YouTube wouldn't allow it, but the unedited version is on our Patreon. Where we at right now, cuz? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Man, it's just Puga Mill. Yeah, man, get what? We good. We got trees. Thank Jesus, I'm legit, man. Thank you, Jesus, man. We good. See what's going on, man. See what's going on. OG. Man, you see that? You see how you can put the police out? Hey, Bino, what's up, bro? Where you at, man? Bill, what's up, bro? What's up, ATA or Soho tonight, movie time. We just a little hot my boys, dirty boys. Yo! Shortly after the video went viral on the internet, Young Dolph went to his Instagram saying that Black Youngster and Yo Gotti were playing quote unquote police games. First things first, everybody know it's you, Ho Gotti, that's sending your artists out to say that lame sh Laughing out loud lame. I guess you still mad because I didn't never sign with your ass. Or are you still in your feelings? because you fell out with Gucci man and you was mad cause I kept rocking with Gucci. Sound like a lot of How you do all that hating on me and then go put the police on me? Sad. You came in the game hating on 3-6 Mafia. Now you hating on Dolph, shaking my head. WWF ass. Hey, I've been spraying your chat for years in the whole city know that. Whole guy that you was a I just got back to the city. They say you trying to put charges on me and put the police on me. You seen your little do all your talking. Talk for yourself. Hey, that big head down syndrome looking hate on everybody from the city that gets some real money. Start off hating on 3-6 and they were having Oscars and 
You had to hate because you were broke, nigga. That's the only way you can get attention, boy. You were broke, boy. Now you hating on dog. You a. <laughs> hey, man, if I was your boy, I'd be mad at me, too, man. Why you, why you mad at me? Because your don't fake watch busters and you had to fake it till you make it. And I came in the game rocking real ice driving coops and shit. Now, weeks after during an interview with Gotti, he was asked about the recent back and forth between both Youngster and Young Dolph. Yo Gotti said, little homie on the team, so I'm always going to give him the proper advice that I believe I should give him from being a big brother standpoint, or just being a big homie standpoint. Gotti states in the clip, my advice, you know, I don't move like that. I'm going to always tell you, not only him, but any youngin, don't handle your business like that. Now catching up to the Shake Something disc, the up-tempo disc went directly at his rival, calling Young Dolph out by his name. Released on March 17, 2016, the lyrics go, A Dolph wanna play ho, I'm on tour with the K-ho. Then the clip, 100 rounds on a Draco. How the f you the king of Memphis, you ain't from the city, you from Chicago. Boy, you better lay low, move when I say so. Right around the same time, Young Dolph released the diss track as well. It was on the song Ready Remix, the song featured Big Bag Black, Young Dolph, and Young Thug. Now the lyrics that Dolph said was, All my niggas they ready. Y'all some niggas y'all scared. All on the internet telling. Trying to have a real nigga gelling. This shit on my neck so heavy. I'ma keep dripping sauce spaghetti. He also said, Any that record when it's time for some gangster shit, he the police. And I f***ed your boss baby mama same hotel four weeks. Never send a little boy to take care of grown man business. If I was you, I'll be mad at me too, so I ain't tripping. Now Dolph didn't stop there. He went on to release one of the greatest diss tracks ever, Play With Your Bitch. Now during the music video, it shows a Yo Gotti and his big brother Big Jook lookalike. Now in response, Black Youngster CEO replied by taking the higher route and tweeting subliminally. I'm a businessman with LA Reid and Jay-Z, hashtag CM9, blah, blah, blah. Hashtag CM9 in stores and iTunes now. Now, two weeks after the diss track and the video was released, Young Duff was shot a hundred times in Charlotte during a CIAA weekend. The same van that was used as a getaway car was allegedly rented by Black Youngster himself. They start sh they shot, they shot, they shot. Sh was over with. Eventually, the charges were dropped, being that the rental was reported stolen before the shooting even happened. Along with that, Black Youngster proved that he had a real strong alibi. It was placing him in Durham, North Carolina for a performance which is hours away from Charlotte. TMZ also reported that the DA said there were no witnesses that ID Black Youngster and there were no scientific evidence linking him to the sh**. After being in the spotlight globally for being accused for the sh**, Youngster announced that he was releasing new music, which was released on June of 2017, which was called I'm Innocent. During the promo run, he admitted on several platforms that he was trying to squash the beef once with Young Dolph. Seems like Youngster was getting back to the money and not the issues with other people. Now, when they say it rains, it pours. Now, after beating the case and spending a huge amount on his legal fees, Youngster would have to bury another brother. This time, his second brother, to Derry Benson or TD Heavy Camp to the music world. He lost his life at an apartment complex in Lauder Hill, Florida. Though the information is limited, it is rumored that the passing was a result of street dealings in Florida and it had nothing to do with Youngster or Young Dolph. For being a real for being my little brother, bro, what you want? You want it, bro? I'm, I'm gonna keep this, I'm gonna keep this though, you can get that. Nah, bro, you, you, you don't want it? Get it then, forget what? You gonna do? What you gonna do? You gonna turn up? <laughs> It's just, it's just cause I love you, bro. Cause you my little brother. I love you. Love you too, bro. Appreciate you. Real boy, you know. In the time he get real boy, you know. Just off, off the strength, you know. No birthday, none of this shit, bitch. Hey, bro. Nah, number love. Appreciate <laughs> you, bro. Gang shit. Real for real. Real. Rex, whore. The problems didn't stop there. While performing in Charleston, South Carolina, youngster had to up a Draco on a concert goer for testing him and his crew's gangster. Youngster made sure to finish his set and then invited the ops to come outside to handle the dispute. It's safe to say that they didn't take the invitation.
being that the incident went viral and him beating that young Duff case, Youngster was on the law's radar list. He was arrested both in Dallas and Houston for weapons charges. Youngster threw another dart at Young Dolph on Instagram, but he contradicted himself. Now he went on his Instagram and he put a video up of him letting off in the air and he put the Instagram caption. You want my gang gonna get your shooter Hashtag heavy camp, hashtag super hot, hashtag super CMG. When asked about this viral clip on social media on The Breakfast Club, Dolph replied and said he had a case pending and he was low key calling black guns to the police. That black youngster still still coming at you, Dolph. Shooting out of the window, and he, he added you and said, fucking with my gang, gonna get your shit shot. I'm already fighting the case right now. I'm already in some right now. I don't want to play police games. When you start playing police games, I exit myself out the equation. I'm gonna I'm stop me if I'm ratchet and homie ratchet. So I ain't trying to hear shit from each other. You know, they how they, they shit. And I'm cool with that. Now, the next year, Young Dolph was in a planned hit in South Memphis in November of 2021. A month after his passing, Black Youngster released a music video in a cemetery. It had obvious subliminal distance toward Young Dolph, whose last name was Thornton, full name Adolph Thornton Jr. Then weeks after, he performed his viral diss song towards Young Dolph, Shake Some, in Dallas during a club performance. Fans and people in the club felt this diss was very distasteful, being that Young Dolph was dead. Some speculate that Black Youngster was tied into the death of Young Dolph, but the suspects were caught weeks after the shoot, leaving Youngster in the clear. Now, rumors started to say that Youngster was not CMG anymore, and the rumor turned out to be false, as Yo Gotti went to his Twitter to say, Lil Bro Boss, he can't be dropped. Hashtag CMG, hashtag Heavy Camp. Fake news. Now, the next year, Youngster would have to bury his last remaining brother after being shot down at a South Memphis gas station. The younger brother to Youngster had gotten into an argument in which Benson turned away from the argument. This is when he was shot in the back of the head. Not only that, the guy he was arguing with to the occupants of Benson's car. 28-year-old Randy Ewing sinks into his seat upon hearing he has a $1 million bond in connection to the kick of Tamanuel Benson. You've also been charged with an eight felony second degree murder. That carries 15 to 60 years if you are convicted. Benson was down outside of a BP gas station on South Parkway East last August. Before the court documents say Benson and Ewing were seen arguing. Once Benson turned away, Ewing allegedly shot Benson in the back of the head and then fired into a vehicle. Another man was also shot, but survived. Law enforcement spent months tracking Ewing down, even offering a $5,000 reward. Six months later, officers had a break in the case. U.S. Marshals found Ewing walking on Creighton Avenue. Many people we spoke to say they had seen Ewing throughout the neighborhood, but had no idea he was a wanted man. Court documents say Ewing attempted to run into this home. After multiple warnings, officer released a canine, and Ewing was taken into custody after being treated at a hospital for a bite to his leg. He was also reportedly found with a stolen gun. I look at all these fools that's around here, and they, 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 they just begging to go to jail. Don't care. Ewing faces a slew of old and new charges, including second degree murder, attempted murder, theft, evading arrest, and being a convicted felon in possession of a hand. Reporting from 201, Kwame True Woolporn, WREG News Channel 3. The news of losing his final brother sent waves throughout social media. 
and he shortly posted the same day after he passed. He says, life will never be the same, but God got me. I'm the strongest man in the world. Go make sure they feel me, I promise. I'm ready for whatever come with me. It's okay. I'm not gonna feel sorry for nobody. Only God knows. I love you, baby brother. Rest up. I'm gonna make the world pay. I swear to God, nobody's safe. Standing over everybody. The suspect is currently awaiting trial. The next week, Black Youngster released a mixtape, Black Sheep 2, on his record label, Heavy Camp Records. From August to the end of 2023, Black Youngster was on a CMG artist art tour in which he was getting a lot of attention. People were saying that he was mocking Young Dolph. Now, at the start of the year of 2024, Black Youngster Yo Gotti and CMG lost one of the biggest people in CMG, Big Juk, who is Yo Gotti's brother. Now, the same person who had issues with Young Dolph throughout his career. Juk was shot at a funeral service in East Memphis, where he died right outside the service as it let out. Some debate that this hit was a retaliation for Young Dolph dying the year before, while others say it was just some old Memphis beef. Get you back to that story we told you about off the top of the broadcast a in Hickory Hill with connections to Memphis rapper Yo Gotti. Fox 13's Lakia Scott joins us live tonight from St. Francis Hospital. That's where the victims were taken. Lakia, what were you able to find out? Good evening to you. Good evening, Daniel. Well, at least five police sources have confirmed with Fox 13 that the person killed is Anthony Mims, also known as Big Jook. Now, Big Jook is the brother of rapper Yo Gotti. Now, we were at that scene earlier tonight. Police say two men were outside Perion's restaurant and event center around 4.15. Now, that's on Winchester near Kirby. According to the Memphis Police Department, the victim was inside a vehicle at the time and was brought here to St. Francis Hospital, where he was pronounced deceased. Now, I'm also learning there was a second person who was and was also taken to the hospital. It has not been confirmed who the second person is, but we do know it is a man and he was airlifted to Regional One in critical condition. Now, the Memphis Police Department spoke with us today in a press conference. Let's listen. Right now, we do have video that we're analyzing, but we don't have a clear suspect identified at this time. But we know that a, a weapon was used. A, a used in this incident. Um, it, we do feel like the individual that was uh, shot was possibly targeted by the suspect. Can you tell right. us whether one of the victims is Yogati's brother? I can't confirm anything yet. Now again, at least five police sources confirmed with Fox 13 that the person Anthony Mims, also known as Big Jook. Big Jook, again, is the brother of rapper Yo Gotti. Now, according to police, there is at least one, but there may be more involved. Daniel. Fox 13's Lakia Scott starting our live coverage off at 9 with major breaking news. Sources close to the family of rapper Yo Gotti confirm the man outside a Hickory Hill event center is Gotti's brother. Memphis police identified him as 47-year-old Anthony Mims, also known as Big Jook. Mims was shot in the parking lot of Pernon's restaurant and event center. Another man who was is still alive but in the hospital. Tonight, police are looking for a white Ford Explorer SUV in connection with the shooting. It has dark tinted windows and black wheels. A witness told police they saw suspects in the SUV speeding away and surveillance video also shows this. If you recognize this vehicle or have any information, call Crime Stoppers at 901-528-CASH. Snipers, helicopters, and a massive police presence all for the funeral of Yo Gotti's big brother, Big Juk. That's what people saw in Hickory Hill today outside of New Direction Christian Church. Now you remember that Big Juk was just outside of a funeral service earlier this month. That's why MPD wanted to be prepared. They told us they put so much manpower in purpose there today. Fox 13's Walter Murphy was in Hickory Hill. He joins us live. Mark, Walter, it wasn't just MPD. There was private security there working the funeral as well, you found out. 
Yeah, that's right, Daryl. There were private security officers there too, but the scene was so big that people that I talked to thought that it was just a large scene. Now, I wanna get straight to that video from this afternoon. You could see there were dozens of Memphis Police Department squad cars in parking lots for blocks. There were even on the church where the funeral was taking place. There was even a helicopter casing the church from the sky. Now, it was all out of an abundance of caution. That's according to the Memphis Police Department who told Fox 13 that the high profile nature of the funeral and the high profile way that Big Jug lost his life earlier this month when he was leaving a funeral himself warranted all of this. And it's something that Greta Williams, who lives nearby, agreed with. You tell me That's no someone's family member at the end of the day, regardless of fame or money. So it's just like you're a brother or mine. So any loss is a loss. I would say they were probably just trying to look out for everybody's well-being in the area. It's a high crime area, so um, I think they did the right thing. Now, I was told that all of those Memphis Police Department officers were actually from the precinct. They do patrol Hickory Hill on a regular basis. They didn't take any officers from other neighborhoods. And the investigation into Big Jook's is still underway. That is Fox 13's Walter Murphy live in Hickory Hill tonight. Walter, thank you. Some say that Big Jook and Black Youngster ultimately masterminded the hit on Young Dolph in 2021. But that's pure speculation right now. But one of Dolph's closest friends named the pair on an Instagram live. It's, it's certain folks that got something to do with this. It's Juke, and God, it really ain't got nothing to do with this. But, but Juke, he's, he's his brother. It's Juke, it's Juke, it's Migo, it's Youngster. As of recording this video, Big Juke's case is unsolved. Young Dolph's case for the suspects accused is set to have trial June of 2024. As for Black Youngster, he is still making music, he is still signed to CMG, and he still has his own label, The Heavy Camp.